Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at Galo Sachs Law, also known as the Pressure Temperature Law. Now it's worth pointing out that this video follows on from the theory video on Galo Sachs Law Experiment, so if you haven't watched that already, I would recommend doing that. So let's get started. Now you should remember the conclusion from the Galo Sachs Law Experiment, which was that pressure is directly proportional to temperature when we've got a fixed mass of gas at constant volume, and this was called Galo Sachs Law or the Pressure Temperature Law. Now what we're going to do is just like we did for Boyle's Law, we're going to take our law in symbol form and convert it into an equation. We can use a mathematical trick to introduce a constant, just like we did for Boyle's Law. So we can say that if we've got P is directly proportional to T, and we want to get rid of this proportional to sign, then we can replace this with an equal sign as long as we multiply the thing on the right hand side by a constant. So we end up with P equals a constant times T. Now to get the constant on the right hand side, we can divide both sides by T to get P over T equals a constant. So this means whenever we take our pressure value and we divide it by a temperature value, we should get a constant value. So remember, whenever we've got something equals a constant, we can introduce some ones and twos here, some little subscripts. And that's because we'll be dealing with initial and final pressures, but also initial and final temperatures. So we have here P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, where P1 and P2 are the initial and final pressures measured in pascals or newtons per square metre, and T1 and T2 are the initial and final temperatures measured in Kelvin. So remember that Galo Sachs law only holds when temperature is measured in Kelvin, not in degrees Celsius, because we only got the directly proportional relationship, i.e. the straight line through the origin, when we took into account the Kelvin temperature scale. Now remember we could write this equation as equal to P3 over T3, equal to P4 over T4 and so on indefinitely, but you're only ever going to be dealing with initial and final values of things, so we can just go with using 1s and 2s for the subscripts. So this is our equation for Galo Sachs law that we can use in order to do calculations. Lastly we're going to look at how to explain Galo Sachs law or the pressure temperature law in terms of the kinetic model, and remember this just means particles in a sealed container. So it says here to consider a fixed mass of gas at a constant volume in a sealed container, so we're not going to change the size of the container or the box. It then says when the container is heated, the temperature of the gas increases. The average kinetic energy and therefore the speed of the particles increases as a result. So if we look at the picture, you can see that we're keeping the volume constant, but as we heat up the box here, you can see the little curved lines next to the particles here, which represents the particles moving faster than they were before. So because the temperature of the gas has increased, the particles have gained kinetic energy and therefore speed. We can then say that this causes them to collide with the walls of the container harder and more often. Therefore, they exert more force per unit area. This means that the pressure of the gas increases. So we're basically explaining why pressure will increase when the temperature increases. But it's really important you mention when explaining this about the average kinetic energy increasing and the fact that the particles are going to collide harder and more often with the walls of the container. Lastly, it says to note that the gas molecules speed up since the temperature increases. I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this. So you can see here that I've got my particles in my sealed container and you'll notice that I'm keeping volume constant because I'm looking at how pressure and temperature are related. So we're going to keep our container a fixed size, a fixed volume. Now notice that the pressure just now is varying from about 16 to 17 atmospheres. But if I heat up my gas, then the particles should gain speed and therefore kinetic energy, and therefore they should hit off the walls of the container more often and with more force, and therefore you'll notice there is more force per unit area on the walls, and therefore an increased pressure, since pressure is the force per unit area. So now I'm at about 60 atmospheres and a temperature of about 1073 Kelvin, whereas we started off at a temperature of about 300 Kelvin. So we've shown that as temperature increases, the pressure will increase for the gas. However, the opposite is also true, so if I decrease the temperature and cool the gas down, then you'll notice the pressure is decreasing, and that's because the particles now have less kinetic energy and therefore less speed, and they're therefore going to hit off the walls of the container less often and with less force, and that means we can say there is a reduced force per unit area exerted on the walls of the container, which leads to a decreased pressure. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching, if you made it to the end I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.